Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark Cards bring you Fred McMurray in Nebraska Coast on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories and presents as your host one of the most distinguished actors of the American theater, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lionel Barrymore. You know, nowadays when people talk about going to the coast, they generally mean the Pacific coast. So I have a hunch some of you may be surprised by the title of the novel we are dramatizing tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse. It's called The Nebraska Coast. Uh, uh, Clyde Brian Davis gave it that title because it's about a family that settled in Nebraska, just west of the Missouri River. Uh, they settled in that section, which used to be called the Nebraska Coast. I have another hunch, too, that you like this story of a pioneer American who dared to dream and to struggle. Yes, and to laugh. <laughs> and to star in that role, we've invited back an old friend of Hallmark Playhouse, Fred McMurray. And now, here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you're looking for a way to say something to someone you care for, look for a Hallmark card, and you'll find the card you want to send. Because Hallmark Cards are designed to say what you want to say, just the way you want to say it, with the good taste you demand of anything that bears your signature. That's why Hallmark on the back of a greeting card has come to mean you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Because You're Mine, starring Mario Lanza, Doretta Morrow, and James Whitmore. And now, here's the first act of Nebraska Coast, starring Fred McMurray. By the light from the oil lamp, one can see that his hair is beginning to gray. The uncertain light etches even deeper the humorous lines around his mouth, <laughs> lines worn there by so many years of laughter. Even now he smiles again as he folds up the letter and returns it to the envelope. He smiles as his thoughts turn back to another time and another letter. It's just a little over 10 years ago. It was summer, I remember. The summer of, yes, of 61. The news of Bull Run reached us in New York State on the same day as my cousin's letter from out west. Kathy and I didn't talk about the letter until after supper. We went out onto the front porch to get away from my sister-in-law's latest enthusiasm, the uh, piano. I wish I could understand you, Jack. We've got a perfectly good farm here. By York standards, uh, yes, York State standards, Kathy, but Dave says that out there it's nothing to raise 80 bushels of corn to the acre. Oh, well, but your cousin Dave... I that... believe him, Kathy. And when Dave says we can buy all the land we want from the government for only a dollar and a quarter an acre, I say let's do it. And we're, we're buying more than land. We're investing in the future of the Great West. The future? Well, what about now? It's wilderness with, with Indians and ruffians and outlaws. Now, Kathy... The Nebraska Territory has some good folks, too. They just need more of them. Sure, it'll be hard on us at first. Well, but... I'm not thinking about us. There's Clinton. We can't let our son grow up without learning. Oh, you'll get all the schooling from the best teacher there is. Nature herself. Come on, Kathy, what do you say? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I just, I just don't... Christy! Christy, can't you play anything else on that piano? Oh, I'll declare I'll be glad when Johnny does come marching home and we can have some quiet around here. Oh, is that the uh, name of our newest? No, no, it's Andy, some drummer from Canandewa. That's another thing, Jack. 
What about my sister, Christy? Sure, sure. She can come along, too, but without the piano. <laughs> she may meet some brave out there and move into her own wigwam. Oh, come on, Kathy. Say yes, and let's go. Unless... Unless you don't believe in me. Well, you know I do, dear. Just that... Well, you're such a dreamer. And dreams don't always come true. Don't they? You married Jack McDougal, didn't you? Oh, well... <laughs> And so we sold the farm and packed our furniture into crates for the long trip ahead. We boarded the train at Canandaigua and stared out of the windows for our last view of our old home. Kathy winked back at the tears and held tightly to my hand. Clinton! Clinton, where's your Aunt Christie? Oh, uh, she went up to the freight car, Mom. The freight car? What for? Oh, uh, she said she wanted to be sure the piano was all right. Well, Kathy, I thought she promised that she would... Oh, great thundering Jupiter. It was a long, hard train trip. First to Niagara Falls, then Chicago, then Hannibal, and finally St. Joseph, Missouri. There we boarded the little stern wheeler that was to carry us up the coffee-colored Missouri River. I remember it was late afternoon, and I was standing alone on the stern, sort of absent-mindedly counting the turns of the big paddle wheel. Concrete proof of the power of the steam engine, isn't it, sir? Hmm? What's that? Well, the paddle wheel. Driven by steam, you know. Oh, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. How far upstream are you going? Uh, to the Nebraska coast. I'm getting off in Nebraska City. Well, so am I. My name's Joseph R. Brown, sir, Major, United States Army. Sure, oh, glad to know you, Major. I'm Jack McDougall from New York State. York State, huh? Well, then you came as far as St. Joe by steam train. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. Now you're going on by steam boat. <laughs> America's building and growing and going all by steam. Yeah, next it'll be the steam wagon. Hmm? Well, you uh, never heard of a steam wagon before. No, it's not likely you would have. It's a brand new thing. I invented it. Oh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got my patents on it. Built two machines already. Suppose we find a nice, quiet spot. I'll show you how it works. Well, uh, just a minute. If, if you're trying to sell me stock in something, I... Uh... <laughs> no, not at all, sir. I got all the money I need. Even a contract to start hauling freight from Nebraska City clear out to the Pikes Peak country. Believe me, sir, in two years, my steam wagons will be reaching clear to California. Oh, yeah. Uh, Major Brown. Yeah? What route will your wagons be taking? Why, the new cutoff has just been laid out. Nebraska City to Salt Creek, then over to the Big Blue River, and Fort Kearney and the Platte. As Major Brown talked, I began shifting plans around in my mind. And by the time we landed at Nebraska City, I knew what I was going to do. I bought a team of horses and a covered wagon. Kathy and Clint sat up front with me, and Christy rode in back with that confounded piano of hers. We set out due west, following the single furrow line which had been plowed across the prairie to mark out the trail. Every now and then we'd sight a line of huge freight wagons lumbering toward us. Long before the drivers were inhaling distance, we'd hear the crack of their bullwhips and the bellowing of the straining oxen. The drivers would call out to us, laughing and swearing at the top of their lungs. And then, all at once, we'd be alone again. One wagon wallowing across the endless sea of prairie. Jack? Jack? Uh, yes, Kathy? When are we going to turn south? We aren't. Well, but we have to to get to Cousin Dave. Kathy, you remember me telling you about Major Brown and his steam wagons? Yes. Well, we're going to stake out our farm right along the route of the steam wagon so we can get our stuff to market quickly and cheaply. Oh, Jack. Are you sure the wagons will really work? Christy thinks it's a crazy idea. No, she does. Well, I've seen the Major's blueprints, and she hasn't. The engines are going to be big enough and powerful enough to pull a whole string of wagons, just like a railroad engine, only better. Because the steam wagon doesn't run on rails, it can go anywhere. Hey, Daddy, we stop it? Yep. You see that stand of trees up there? Yeah. Well, that means we're coming to a stream. And that's just what I've been scouting for. Whoa, whoa. Jack. You mean right here? Right here. Just look at that soil, Kathy. It's rich and black. The best growing land I've ever seen. How about it? Well, perhaps. 
What do you say, Clint? Where are we going to sleep, Dad? <laughs> right here in the wagon, son, until we cut some of that timber and start building. Christy, how about you? Christy, how's this for the farm? Hey, Christy, are you deaf? Kind of, Daddy. She put cotton in her ears so she couldn't hear the bullwhackers hollering. Oh, <laughs> well, her face tells what she's thinking anyway. All right, I guess I'm going to have to prove myself to all of you. Everybody out. We're home. Everything had to be done at once. 160 acres had to be staked out, the house built, the ground broken by the plow and seeded by hand. Finally, the farmhouse was up and I turned to fencing the property. One afternoon, Clint and I were digging post holes when another train of freighters came lumbering along the trail. The lead wagon pulled up in front of us and a fellow with a big red beard grinned down at us. Hi! Hi, mister. Hi. Uh, something we can do for you? No. Oh. Just trying to figure out what in tarnation you folks are doing way out here in the middle of no place. <laughs> Just what it looks like. We're farming. Farming? <laughs> Friend, what kind of a double-talking hairpin told you about this place? And farming? Why, that's work fit only for fools and saints. And for those who are neither, sir. It's the calling of men that were born brave. Kathy. I beg pardon, ma'am, but... Uh, firemen don't put cash in a man's book. All you got to do is follow along this trail to Pike's Peak and the gold diggings are beyond that to California and still more gold. There are many kinds of riches, sir. And we found ours right here in this soil, in Nebraska, in ourselves. Uh-huh. Uh, I see. Well, friends, luck to you anyhow. Thanks. So long. Uh, say, mister. Yes? Come to think of it, me and the boys ain't had any home cooking for a long spell. Uh, suppose maybe if we was to pay you for it, why... Well, uh, how about it, Kathy? Certainly. If you'll tell your men to go around to the kitchen, my sister and I are just starting supper. Uh, hey, boys! Home cooking! Come on! Oh, 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 oh. Kathy, Kathy, wait. But I've got to go and help Christy. Kathy, you do believe in what you just said, don't you? Yes, I do, dear. I do. I'm so tired of everyone laughing at you. People find talking so easy, but you just dare and go right ahead. And I'll go right on daring, Kathy. Just as long as you're by my side. Hey, Mama, listen. <gasps> I might have known the moment Christy sees some new men coming. Clinton, run and tell her the men want food, not entertainment. Now hold on, Kathy. Let's give them both. Just. Don't you see, honey? This is just the beginning. Why, well, we're going to start feeding all the wagon crews. We're starting an inn. And after that, maybe a freight depot. We're going to be ready for Major Brown and his steam wagons. We'll make this the best stopover out of Nebraska City. A trading post. A center that'll bring others to this farm area where they're in this prairie with us. Why, before you know it, we'll have our own town, Kathy. And you know what we're going to call it? What? We'll call it McDougal. McDougal, Nebraska. <laughs> Just a moment, we will return to the second act of Nebraska Coast, starring Fred McMurray. How would you like to know that your friends will be particularly proud to display your Christmas card? You can be sure of that special satisfaction if you choose your greetings from the famous Hallmark Gallery Artist Series. Each card in this distinctive group is a beautiful color reproduction of the work of a famous artist. You'll find charming scenes of New England by Grandma Moses, heartwarming bits of Americana by cover artist Norman Rockwell, and vigorous landscapes by the renowned British statesman Winston Churchill. Then there are sophisticated styles by Steinberg, the New Yorker cartoonist, seascapes by Earl Bailey, and many, many more. Once you see them, you'll know that these are the cards your friends will love to display, the cards they'll treasure long after the Yuletide season. You'll find Hallmark Gallery Artist Christmas cards at fine stores everywhere. Why not order yours now in plenty of time for personal imprinting? You can depend on it. That hallmark on the back of the card you send will tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to Lionel Barrymore in the second act of Nebraska Coast, starring Fred McMurray. Good pair. 
past is never truly gone. It lives on in memory, requiring only some slight accidents and some tiny signal to bring yesterday and today together as one. So it is now with Jack McDougal as he sits alone and stares thoughtfully at a letter resting in his lap. It was right after Kathy and her sister started the restaurant for the freight wagon drivers that I got a message from Major Brown. He wanted me to come to Nebraska City and see, for the, see the first of his steam wagons. I met the Major at the hotel and he led me down Main Street toward where a big crowd was gathering. By the way, McDougal, you had any Indian trouble? Us? No, no, no. We live in Pawnee country, Major. And they're friendly to whites. Besides, we're too many for them now. Too many? You mean you got neighbors? Oh, sure, sure. Some of the folks passing along the trail saw how well we were doing, and now we got five farmhouses going up right now. Glad to hear it. Do you think we might use your place as a depot for our steam wagons? Well, I've been counting on it, Major. The fact is, I'm planning to build a new house for us up on the hill, and then we can turn the old one into a general store. You see, already I've been selling light goods to the bullwhackers passing through. Good, good. I'm sure we'll prosper together, Mr. McDougal. Right now, my job is to prove the steam wagon before they start building that Pacific Railroad. Are you still talking about that idea back in Washington? Oh, it's more than talk. President Lincoln has signed the bill, and Congress has voted $60 million for it. No. Uh, let us through, gentlemen, please. Make way, please. There. There she is, Mr. McDougal, our first steam wagon. Shipped all the way from New York. Well, oh, mighty big, isn't it? See those driving wheels? They're 12 feet high. Enough power behind them to pull five loaded freight wagons. Five, huh? All we need is a good, smooth trail. Say, uh, Major, about that Pacific Railroad... I'm aboard, sir. We're going to give her a test run. All right, Ben. You got 30 pounds steam. Uh, Major Brown, they'll be bringing the railroad through Nebraska City, wouldn't they? Oh, no, no, they're not. It's Omaha. Omaha? Put it in gear, Ben. Let her go. The engine seemed to work fine, and Major Brown rode us clear to the end of Main Street. The following Tuesday, the steam wagon train was to make its first trip across the prairie. And I promised the Major we'd be waiting at the farm with a big supper for the wagon crew. Tuesday night came, but uh, no steam wagon. Then Wednesday. Then Thursday. The Friday morning, I saddled up and rode off east to see what was wrong. When I got back to the farm, Kathy and Clint were waiting at the door. And Christy, well, she was just sitting in her rocker looking grim. Jack, what happened, Daddy? No, it busted down completely. Oh. The engine just sitting out there in the prairie, seven miles from Nebraska City. Oh. Say, the gears went bad or something. Major Brown's gone back to New York to have the whole new outfit made. Oh, Jack, so much time left. Yes, I know. Meanwhile, the railroad's going to be building. With no steam wagon, the railroad will take all the freight business, and our trail here will go back to the weeds. Hey, Christy, will you stop that confounded everlasting rocking? Well, what's the matter with her? Oh, she's just tired, dear, and disappointed. We've cooked those three big meals for the wagon crew and had to throw them all away. I know. Now Christy thinks I'm a sure enough failure. Mama, Daddy. Oh, Quentin, <laughs> hush, dear. It's all right. Son, listen to me. I didn't say this was the end of everything. Maybe there never will be a McDougal, Nebraska, but we've still got the land. The good black Nebraska soil. Jack, there's a wagon outside. Now, let me see. Afternoon, sir. I was wondering if you could tell me about the Indian situation out west of here. Uh, uh, how far are you going, young man? The Pikes Peak region. I've got a printing press out in the wagon, hoping to set up a newspaper in the gold diggings. Uh, a newspaper, huh? Yes, sir. But about the Indians? Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Uh, is that your wife out there in the wagon? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can she uh, handle the gun good? You mean, you mean they're on the warpath? Yeah, oh, it's too bad. You're both so young, too. We've come a long way, so we can't turn back. No, you don't have to. You could settle down right here and turn out your newspaper. Here? But there's nothing but a few farms. Newspapers got to have readers. Look, son, I can see you don't have the proper appreciation of your opportunity. This is MacDougall, Nebraska. Every wagon freighter stops off here. And what do those fellas want? Well, they want reading matter. We can sell them the newspaper and run stories all about their friends. Uh, you said we. No, naturally, naturally, because we're partners, you see. 
Now, I'm going to build the printer's shop for you, and my general store is going to be your first advertiser. But, but I'm not, I'm not sure that yes, I... Yes, you are. Now, you go out and bring your wife in here for supper. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, no, not this one, Christy. He's already married. That was how young Dave Seabury and I started McDougal Enterprise. Most newspapers wait until there's a town with customers to read it. This time, a paper was going to build a town and bring its own customers. As each edition came out, I started to take copies of it to Nebraska City. Must be quite an up-and-coming place with a paper like this, Mr. McDougal. Yes, I'll be glad to come out and open up a school. Reverend, we've got all the beginnings of civilization, this newspaper here, and a school. Now, if you'll say yes, we'll have a church. Don't take my word for it, Doctor. Read the newspaper. We've got a school for our children, a minister for our families. All we need now is somebody to take care of our health. Friends, every member of this town meeting knows how far we've come in such a short time. But we could still lose everything unless we keep the freight business passing through here. And you know what's happened to that lately. Sure, the Pacific Railroad's taking the business. That's right. But now I just got back from our new state capital, and I want to report that they like my idea. They're going to build another railroad from Nebraska City right through this town. Mr. Chairman, Jack's right. We have come a long way, but there's still one thing we haven't got. A mayor from McDougal, Nebraska. Gentlemen, all in favor of... Jack, why don't we go out and sit on the front porch? There's a beautiful full moon. Darling. Did you hear me? Yes, Kathy, I heard you. Well, what's wrong, dear? Are you worried about something? No, no. No, I was just sitting here thinking. I read this letter and it kind of reminded me of some things that happened. May I read it? Sure. Dear Mr. McDougal, the people of Nebraska have long admired you as a man of vision and courage. And so we of the State Central Committee wish to nominate you as our representative to the National Congress in Washington. Oh, Jack. A man of vision, they say. You are, darling. I don't know. Makes me feel kind of uncomfortable not to be laughed at anymore. No, not even by her. <laughs> say, uh, Chrissy's learned a new piece. Yes. What's happened to when Johnny comes marching home? He has, dear. He has. What? Yes. The postmaster proposed to her this evening. Great thundering <laughs> Jupiter. <laughs> Things do work out, don't they, Kathy? Yes, they do. Yes, they've always worked out for us, for you and me. And they always will. Whether it's Nebraska or Washington, D.C., everything's going to be all right. Because we'll be together. <laughs> if that sounds like the talk of a man of vision, I, I guess maybe they're right. You're my vision, Kathy. Always. Fred McMurray and Lionel Barrymore will return in a moment. Isn't it good to think that friendship, the one best thing we have to give away, can't be measured by cost? You could no more put a price tag on thoughtfulness and kindness than you could on the butum of an autumn day. Yet the act of being friendly is often such a simple one. A visit to welcome a new neighbor, a cheerful greeting to someone who is ill, or a word of praise and encouragement. I think you'll agree that the happiest people you know are those who have developed the wonderful talent of giving. And one of the most convenient ways for you to remember all your friends and loved ones in these busy days is by sending beautiful Hallmark cards. 
They're the symbols of friendship. They can carry your thoughts to the farthest corners of the world. It takes a little time. It takes a little money to send a heartwarming Hallmark card. And here's something nice to know. Even though the quality of Hallmark cards has improved through the years, their prices remain the same. And you can count on it. That Hallmark on the back tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is Lionel Barrymore. When your story's about the Midwest, there's nothing like a real Midwesterner to bring it to life. Especially when that Midwesterner's name's Fred McMurray. <laughs> it was great having you on Hallmark Playhouse tonight, Fred. You gave us an excellent performance. Well, thanks, Mr. Barrymore. I, I enjoyed being here. Yeah. Let's see now. You were born in Illinois, weren't you? That's right. You went to school in Wisconsin? with the youngest member of your graduating class and earned a number of letters in athletics and you play the saxophone. Well, you uh, seem to know an awful lot about me. Yeah, I do. I sure do. You see, last week, Jane Wyman told me you were one of the Hollywood artists whose paintings were going to be on Hallmark cards this Christmas. And so I did a little researching. I knew you was an athlete and an actor and a musician. But I didn't know about this artistic phase. Well, there was a time when I had an ambition to become a commercial artist, Mr. Barrymore, and I guess all the other things sort of sidetracked it. Uh, but it's uh, been a wonderful hobby to have, and I'm glad that one of my watercolors was considered good enough to appear on Hallmark greeting cards, Christmas cards. <laughs> uh, hobby's a lot more fun when it's shared. Oh, sure, it's, it certainly is. Most certainly is. Thanks again for being with us, Fred, and I hope you'll be listening next week when we present a charming story by Jane Austen called Mansfield Park, starring Angela Lansbury. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Sunday. Our producer-director is William Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose, and our story tonight was adapted by Leonard Sinclair. Until Sunday, then, next... This is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Mr. McMurray is soon to be seen as the star of the forthcoming motion picture, Fair Wind to Java. The role of Kathy was played by Loreen Tuttle. Sammy Ogg played Clinton. The part of Major Brown was played by Gerald Moore. Eddie Firestone was the newspaper man. And Ted DeCorsio was the teamster. Every Sunday, Hallmark Cards present two great programs for the whole family's enjoyment. On radio, the Hallmark Playhouse with host Lionel Barrymore. And on television, outstanding dramatic entertainment on the Hallmark Television Theater. Consult your paper for time and station. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Angela Lansbury in Jane Austen's Mansfield Park and the week following Ellsworth Fane's Young Mr. Disraeli starring Joseph Cotton and the week after that, Sir Walter Scott's Lady of the Lake. Hi, folks, this is Bob Crosby. I know you've heard of Club 15, but do you know where it is? It's up, down, all around, kitchen, living room, bedroom, car. Wherever there's a radio, there's Club 15. So, join us tomorrow night on KMBC. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.